Hey class, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about clay and cookies. Let's get into it. Hey class, how's it going? Mr. G here, your online art professor. Today we're gonna to be going over the cookie jar project. What does that mean? We're gonna be making a cookie jar out of some clay. All right, so got my little creature monster here. The theme for this project is you are creating a creature monster out of some clay that you're going to be using for your model. Uh, I, I would go on Pinterest. I have an entire section in my ceramics uh, board devoted to these little guys. And this is a riff off of the artist. Hold up. It's it's these guys. Uh, Chris... Chris Reiniak, Reiniak, I think is his name. Uh, he does all of these super cool creature things that look like this. And I saw it and I was like, that's amazing. I love that. Love it so much. I made another one because I know most of my projects I never finish uh, because I don't get to the glaze phase. Uh, but this I made for somebody and it's got the head is removable. So you can see how it's a elongated joint slides into the body cavity to create the cookie jar. I love these things. They're just amazing. So how do we build it? Let's do a poll down below. Tell me what is the best cookie and what is the class favorite cookie for what should be in these cookie jars? Put that in the comments below. Happy to read those comments from you guys. Throw some comments below because I'd love to see what your two cents on what kind of cookie jars you would do. Let's put a poll out there. What cookie is the best cookie? I have a very strong opinion about Chick-fil-A cookies myself. Those are perfection. I do also have a strong affinity for oatmeal raisin. It's a classic. It's old school. Yes, it's got raisins in it, but you know what? It's a cookie, so the sugar really bounces out. All right, for this project, you are doing primarily the coil making process. Now, for the build of this, start out with a bunch of clay, rolling out basic coils. Now, for these coils, you do want to make sure that you're doing a nice, thick base amount, uh, meaning that your coils should be, I don't want to say about the, the width of your thumb, but they do need to be chunky. Uh, reason being is because that's where it's going to be holding a lot of weight in the overall piece. Uh, your head, depending on how big your head is, that is going to add a lot of weight pressing down onto the onto the structure that you're building. So you want to make sure that you build a good amount of the base first as you guys are building along. Now the rest of the project is pretty self-explanatory. We're doing a coil vase element where you're just doing a, a bodied vase. Now as you're building up the vase, think about the exterior cut design of that body. Uh, for me, I want to have more of a cylindrical cylinder shape to it and I was going to add on the additional uh, the arms and legs after and we're going to go into that in just a second as you're adding on the the clay and building up the vase try and smooth it out as, as evenly as possible as you're in the build phase you want to make sure that there is you have a smooth surface on the interior and the exterior the reason you want it on the interior is you would put the cookies in and you don't want them all scratching up on the on the rough walls make it really smooth on the inside I recommend adding a lot of thick slip on the inside just to help make it a lot easier to smooth pieces out. Now, I, I recommend doing that in moderation a little bit just because you want to make sure that your water is not too much on, in that slip that you're adding into the piece because if you're adding too much water, it's it's going to um, it's gonna wet the piece too much and that's going to cause structural instability. So just a quick tip. Now, as you guys are building up those pieces, keep on building up that shape and then building up the head separately. I made those as two different pieces. You do need to, if you have a set of calipers, you're using that to size how wide the neck should be on both pieces so that those pieces will fit together. Now, for me, I create a flange element, which is where the top of the head or the body, I should say in my case, top of the body I created a, a ring that came up off the top of it and you guys can see that in the section of the video coming up as the piece is built up over that the head will slide on top over that flange unit and I'll create that locking mechanism that we need for our cookie jar we'll make sure that these pieces stick together and don't slide off of one another now as you guys are continuing to build up those pieces now we're gonna start thinking about the detail elements what are we gonna do to add in the details uh, for the ears or if you want like winged elements uh, adding those things in there try and 
create one, lay it on the piece of a slab, trace it out to create a second version of it. That just saves time and effort on your part and it makes life a lot easier. Next, let's get into the body attachment elements. Now for this build, I just took additional pieces of clay and formed them into the shape to slap it on. These are hollow because you wanna limit how much weight you're putting on there. You don't want solid chunks of clay. Make sure those are hollow segments. Uh, and then afterwards, went back with the pen tool, focus, and stabbed it several times to alleviate the air. You don't want air to be getting in there because that will cause chaos in the firing phase. So you wanna make sure you pop a little hole in there just so it can vent out the air. Now, none of those pieces are touching the interior walls of the where the cookies are gonna be held. So you have a couple options. Option A, leave that with the pinholes in there. When you glaze it over, just pop a little bit of glaze on there afterwards because once you've done your bisque firing, your clay is safe to patch holes over and create little locked in spaces. I know I'm gonna get feedback from other art people that says, don't do that, it's, you're still gonna have the same issue. Well, take it with a grain of salt, it's experimentation. If you think it'll survive, go for it. If you don't think it'll survive, don't risk it. Uh, my rule of thumb is once you've baked out all of the chemical water from the bisque firing, the amount of water that is left in the glaze, as long as you do a preheat and ensure that all of the water vapor is boiled off, and most, if you get to a candling phase, it takes to 200 degrees, most of that does boil off, and then it will slow glaze up from there. You shouldn't have any locked moisture, which is gonna create steam, and steam is what cracks the piece. Uh, you're, you're putting pressure, and it's not necessarily because there's trapped air, it's trapped moisture. When there's moisture that's trapped in there, that's when you have the problem because that's when the steam becomes explosive and things pop in the kiln, not because the air is trapped. Helpful tip. Um, but again, these are, these are experimentations. If you do that, you have to go in with at least a bit of knowledge knowing that things might not work out in your favor and it might break. So there's my two cents. Now, once I've gotten those sections done, it's just adding in details at that point. So carving in the eye sections, I do these little dots on their, on this head because, uh, well, that's, that's what it looked like in the picture. Uh, notice how I got a bunch of stippling pieces off the top of this one. Got a little fin head thing. And the second option is when you do those body segments, if you want to carve into it, actually see where the arm is here, this actually cuts, uh, cuts into where that piece is. So I've actually got more little spaces inside of there. Because this is a cookie jar, I wanted to have a nice, simple cylindrical ve vessel in the middle of it. So I did not do that for this piece. But again, it's an option. Doesn't say that you don't, can't do it. Just saying that that's not what I did. So optional option piece there. So if you want to carve it out, you can carve it out. If you want to leave it whole, leave it whole, whichever you do, but make sure that you are venting those sections out just for trapped air purposes. So just keep that in mind. Again, it's moisture, not just air. And for my, art, my uh, art teachers who are out there, that's a great test question. If you're putting this on uh, like Ed Puzzle, there's a, couple, there's a couple places out there that I've seen my videos on that you guys are making a little test on cool please give me a shout out like give me some sort of notice because I, I just stumble across these things i'm kind of like who's making this stuff it's like awesome good for you just let me know <laughs> so moving on uh once you got this piece fired putting it through the glaze process think about how this piece is going to be colored out when you do this my notepads when you've got your notes, color your design in so you have an idea of what colors you're gonna use on glaze. Also, make sure you know what colors are gonna go through the kiln right. Number one, I always tell all my students, red should be like the lowest idea that you use. Reason being, the red glaze as a whole. This one's difficult. This is like, it's like the, this is like the alchemist color. Reason that this color is so difficult is like, let's break down what glaze is. All right, so glaze is half clay, half color. And then there's like glass on top of that. So that's another thing. Watch my glaze videos. I go over stuff about that. It's all in the ceramics playlist. Watch those glaze videos. Red is built off of cadmium. Cadmium is like, it has this amount of range that you can find.